Here's another one of those common and often debated topics, blade shapes. People often ask, which one is better? Why is this blade shape the way it is, whereas another one is not? And also, very commonly, why do curved blades cut better than straight ones? But I'd like to stop right there and ask, do we really know that curved blades cut better than straight ones? Because so far, personally, I haven't seen any a conclusive experiments done with these. I mean, sure, people do tests all the time, but usually they just grab random swords and don't really tell us anything about them and then just use them. And there's so many variables that are left unaccounted. So, for example, what steel is used? Most importantly, what's the edge like? If you grab a dull straight blade and a very sharp curved one, well, guess what? The result is predetermined. And also technique, for example. Not every sword is used the same way. And if you use a blade with incorrect technique, you may get very different results. There are some arguments for curved blades, at least when it comes to slicing cuts. Not all of them are equally convincing, but two of the more plausible ones are, for one, you basically get more edge per area. If you look at a straight blade, the length of the blade is what you get in terms of edge. The edge length is basically the same. If you want to be really precise where the point is, you do have a bit of a curvature, so there's a little, tiny little bit more, but not really significant. In this case, because the blade curves away, there is a difference between the overall length as measured from the guard to the point and if you take a tape measure and you hold it right up against the edge, you will actually get more edge length compared to the overall length. Second, you can also argue that because the blade curves away from the target, a smaller section of the edge contacts the target as it is drawn through. So because it is a smaller surface area, it transfers more force. However, that really only applies to flat objects but we are obviously not boards. We are also round to an extent. Some maybe more than others, but we are just not blocky polygon beings. An arm, for example, is generally oval in cross section. So it'll curve and the blade will contact the top of the curvature first, and then it can slice into the rest. So in most cases, also with a straight blade, only a short section of the blade comes in contact with the target and you can still do draw cuts if you like. And in fact, in the manuals, there are some techniques that involve simply pressing the blade against your opponent, sometimes against the cheek, for example, and pushing or pulling. Some people say cutting with a straight blade is more difficult than with a curved one. However, I suspect that has less to do with the blade shape and more with the fact that, unfortunately, on the market there are plenty of reproductions of European swords with a laughably dull edge. Because a lot of people have bought into this myth that European swords were supposedly dull, which, which they really weren't, and that includes some manufacturers and they just don't take the time to give the swords a proper edge. If they are properly sharpened, like to the point where they shave hair off the forearm, they do very well. Personally, I've cut with quite a number of both straight and curved blades, including also curved blades with a crappy edge that just don't cut, and straight blades with a really good edge that cut very, very well. But you know what has a lot more impact on the cutting performance than whether a blade is straight or curved? The blade profile, the cross section, and the balance. Something like this, a rapier for example, can cut but it's not going to be very good at it because the blade is comparatively thick and it's very narrow and the balance is pretty far in the back. So that means you have really good point control, but you just don't have much mass here. So this isn't going to connect with as much force as something like this, which is a really good cutting blade. This is a very wide blade. It's not overly thick, but it has enough mass to 
generate quite a bit of force. Generally, the more mass a blade has towards the point compared to the hilt, the better it's going to cut and the harder it's going to be to move. It's going to require more effort to accelerate it, stop it, change direction. It's just not going to feel quite as agile. With something like this, leaf blade shape, you can see how the blade tapers, gets wider towards the point. And in fact, this is right around the center of percussion. This long kukri is a good example of a tip heavy blade. It's not all that wide, but it's very thick and it doesn't have any large metal parts on the hilt. The weight is centered forward. You can see the balance right here. So there's quite a lot of weight past the center of the blade and well it hits pretty hard this particular long sword on the other hand is more of a thrusting blade as you can see it tapers to a pretty narrow point and it's got a diamond cross section what diamond cross sections generally do is make the blade stiffer so that helps with penetration and then you have this a compromise between a cutting and a thrusting blade this is a side sword also called a cut and thrust sword it's tapered enough and rigid enough to allow effective thrusts, but at the same time, Do you still have, an... have to go on and on and on about every little tiny minutiae of sword design. Yes, yes, yes you know what? some swords to... are slightly different from other swords, but they're all basically the same. A sword, it's, it's an what? iron bar with a handle on the end. You're it's trying to tell me that people these with them, two and that's essentially the what a sword is. And you know, what? you have to use up so much of your and everyone else's life just just talking about every tiny little oh, yeah. detail of difference between one kind of sword and another kind Right, of I'm not the one talking about salt. I mean, this <laughs> is at least something that people have yeah. asked about and it mm -hmm. does make quite a difference. I mean, do you really not see the difference between yeah. something like this, which is almost an axe sword hybrid yes, and yeah. something like that? spoken I mean, like a true cut Tana plonker. What? You're just going on again and again. Oh yeah, we well, have this have slight advantage. Anything? And if you test this, just yeah. hit the guy. Just seriously. In, no, in a, in a yeah, fight, that's point, the first, the the, 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 the blow hitting. which makes a difference between whether you win or lose a fight. That's that's the important blow, right? Yes, that's yeah. true. Yes, but it also has to do enough blow. damage. So that's that's the blow you got to get in. And the first guy who gets that blow in wins the fight okay so until that you're, you're fighting away and you're fighting away and then some guy gets in that that one general blow yes. that wounds the other guy that puts the other guy but under try the to thrust the against the breast and then you can have bring uh, several more blows on top of him and finish the job or maybe that one blow did the job maybe the that gaps. one blow finished the fight but that's the blow that counts Yes, yes, but, but it still so, depends on so, whether or not you can yes, pull but, it but off all like, these swords you try the straight to ones the curved ones whatever they're all fit for purpose. They must yes, have been fit for purpose. Obviously. You know, the, the Roman Spartha, it's a straight sword and they were using them for many, many centuries. Yes. And and then the, in, in the, throughout the whole of the early medieval period in Europe, people are using by and large straight swords. And yeah. the Chinese Zhan, the, awesome tiny, the Chinese Zhan, it's a straight sword. So they what? were using them for two and a half millennia. So we yes, know so what? that a straight sword must have been fit for purpose. Yes, yes, of course, but it doesn't mean it's the only option. Slightly better at cutting, but if you hit someone with a sharp iron bar really hard, it does them in. This is what we know from sword design. A sharp iron bar will do someone in, so it, it's just a matter of who gets in the first blow. And that's largely a matter of how good are you at using it? And, and are the yes, circumstances favorable? A, and a narrow, are, and you're thick quite good blade at using is not good. Whack! You do him in with a straight or a curved or whatever sword. It you can't really whack with you this. You just hit him not effectively. and then the job's done. You, no, it, it just doesn't yeah. a huge yes. difference. I mean, come on, this is not a cutting yeah, blade. Can we agree on that? Right. It can cut, yes. It can be used, but only against but unarmored opponents no, and only against soft you, tissue. You're, you're talking as though it matters. It doesn't matter. How can it possibly matter anymore? How likely are you, seriously, how likely are you to be attacked by someone trying to kill you with a sword. What do you mean nowadays? No, How does that matter? No, th that's not what it's about. It's about no. the shape of historical Why swords. Why did How to defend the themselves against, against, against cars ramming them? That's far more what? likely to happen. Far more people are being, are being knocked over yeah, I, by I know, cars than being... Like, cars grenades then! Grenades! Why don't you just yeah, defend... But, oh, right, yeah, that's, yes! Yeah, the huge big bombs what? that can bang! They're far more deadly. What, what are you talking yes. about? Well, are we going to talk about that's, nukes that's now? What I really want. You know what? That's okay. No, I, don't you. Don't I'm, I'm done with this. No, you're, you're done. Right. It's all. 
sometimes you just gotta know when to end the debate rightly. So I suppose you could say it really does not matter what sword you have as long as it has a pommel.